Good morning, Faith Lutheran. I'm Marcello Blanco. I'm Anna Masseri, reporting from the FLNN. Faith Lutheran incorporates prayer in almost everything they do. It's a scene of chaos and uncertainty. Thanks for tuning in to the FLNN Sports Broadcast. Good morning, Faith Lutheran. I'm Madison Despain. And I'm Marcello Blanco. Thank you for tuning in to the FLNN Sports Broadcast. The Vegas Knights just won their first ever playoff game 1-0 Wednesday night against the LA Kings. They play game two of their series tonight. Go Knights! For sports here at Faith, the track and field team has a successful meet Wednesday night. The men's lacrosse team won their game against Shadow Ridge on Tuesday, and the women's lacrosse team lost their senior night game. Bailey gives us more information about the men's lacrosse team. Hi, this is Bailey reporting live for the FLNN. Stakes are high this year for the men's lacrosse team coming back as the defending state champs. They are really living up to this expectation with an undefeated season, even with several new assets on their team. We interviewed players to get more information on their success this season. Uh, so far, the season's gone pretty good. We have wins against some of our biggest competition, like Palo, and we're about to head out to uh, California and see what we could do there as well. Uh, our season's going great. We're 6-0 and right now, and we couldn't be more excited. Uh, it's going pretty good. We just need to put in some more work for these harder games. Uh, this season's been a bit tougher than like last season where we had some great players because this year it's a lot of freshmen and new players. But overall we're still playing strong so as long as we stay tough it should be the same outcome. Being on a new team is it's different for me but I like it. Um, it's a lot better because my old team really sucked and we're pretty good. Along with being undefeated in league play, the team is also entering the season as the defending state champions. Although it adds pressure to the team, they plan to come back and play in the state championship game again this year. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of pressure coming in because the team before us was a lot older and they were a lot better than us. It definitely is, yeah. Definitely, it points a huge like target on our back and everyone's out to get us, obviously, so we just got to keep strong and keep the pressure up. Looks like the team has no issue dealing with the high stakes for this season. Be sure to attend the next home game on April 24th against Coronado. Signing off for the FLNN, I'm Bailey Friel. Back to you. Thank you, Bailey. We now go over to Shay for the news section of our broadcast. Shay? Thank you, Maddie. Over the weekend, we lost a member of the Faith family, Julian Castillo. Julian was a freshman at Faith and touched the lives of many, from students to faculty. Information about the memorial service is to be determined, and our prayers go out to the Castillo family during this time. Also on Monday, Dr. Book was rushed to the hospital after being hit by a car on Alta while riding his bike. He is safe at home now with only a few stitches under his knee where he was hit by the car's bumper. Tragedy also struck local Centennial High School over spring break when three high school students passed away after a car crash in Huntington Beach. Connor Paravir reports more on this story. Hello, my name is Connor Paravir reporting live for the FLNN. Three weeks ago, three Centennial High School students died in a drunk driving accident. I'm just here to let you know that these three kids were great kids and even here at Faith people knew them for having great smiles and being full of energy. We're here just for the news to let you know what happened. While stopped at a red light, Centennial High School students Dylan Mack, Burke Holly, and Albert A.J. Rossi were killed in a car crash. Also in the car, Alex Vargas survived the collision but suffered burns and a concussion according to the local news. This crash happened shortly before 1.10 a.m. Thursday on the Pacific Coast Highway, where Huntington Beach police said that they were rear-ended in Dylan's red Toyota while it was stopped at a red light. The impact pushed the Toyota into the intersection into a sidewalk by a pole. The Toyota was smoking, and a police officer tried to rescue the others, but the car burst into flames. A visual was planned last week on Friday for the students that died at Centennial High School on the football field. A visual was also had, held Saturday at Huntington Beach Pier. One of the only students at Faith Lutheran, D.J. Heckard, who knew all three of the killed car crash victims, spoke on their behalf today. Family, you know, we grew up together, hung out. He was like, always can make you laugh no matter what, even if you were sad or mad. He always would try to play pranks on people, make you mad, prank call you saying it's your mom, yell at you, like, just joke. He, he was a big jokester. A.J. was just like Dylan, really. They both always always laughing, always smiling, great kids. Always wanted to make people laugh, always had a heart for like other people. Like if they seen other people down, they would be the ones to try to go talk to them, you know, try to go make sure everybody was good. Just remember, keep your loved ones close and always cherish every single day. I'm Connor Perry of your reporting live for the FLNN. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Connor. This week there will be a memorial service for Brooke. As the springtime continues on, it becomes AP exam season. Many Faith Lutheran students take AP classes and will endure exams this May.
Kaya Thomas reports more. AP tests are right around the corner here at Faith Lutheran. Students are preparing to take them here in the arena, here in the resource lab, here in the front office conference room, or here in the library. Students have been preparing for these exams all year long, but how prepared are they really? Uh, I'm most worried about the Lang test because I feel like I don't really know what's on it at all, but I feel like I'm pretty studied for AP Bio and AP so. I don't really care about studying for AP Gov, but AP Music Theory, I really have to study for that, otherwise I will totally get a 1. Some take the exams with hope to get a passing score so it can count as college credit. Others take it purely for a GPA boost. I definitely take it for the college credit because I don't want to have to take more classes in college. Uh, both. I definitely have both in mind. I think most students actually take like AP classes more to get into the college of their choice than anything else. Although they've been studying all year in class, students are still cramming in study time. Uh, yes, I feel like in bio and A-push you really have all the information. We're just now starting to prepare for the test in Lang though, but I felt unprepared before this week. so. AP Gov, yeah, but AP Music Theory, I just feel like there's so much to cram into your brain, like you just can't really study for it. It's like AP Lit, you can't study for it. Well, we've been trying to do some review on short answer questions and working towards like getting through the actual information so that we can really start reviewing the month before exams. The exams are taking place May 7th through the 18th. We wish you the best of luck during this final season. For the FLNN, I'm Kaya Thomas. Thank you, Kaya. Many eager juniors are, con are counting down the days until they are seniors and have the privilege of off-campus lunch. Others wonder why it's a privilege only seniors have. Maddie Despain reports. Faith Lutheran tradition of seniors going off campus has become problematic as juniors are sneaking off with them to grab a quick bite. I want to go off campus for lunch because I want to be able to have the same opportunity as the seniors. You know, if I forget something at home or if I forget my lunch, I can go off campus without having to sign out of the office and take an absence. I have seen some juniors leave for lunch and I think it's fine. Like they shouldn't get in trouble because they're just going out for lunch and coming back. It's kind of one of those things that's never happened and it's kind of a senior privilege you know you go through here we actually do technically have a closed campus but it's a privilege we have allowed to the seniors who are you know, a little older and they, they don't really want to hang out with all the freshmen. Well the juniors pay for the parking pass, the juniors pay uh, the same tuition rates. I mean I think if you have a car and you pay for the parking pass you should be able to go off campus like a policy change would be it people higher than me saying we're going to open it up to the junior class but i don't really ever see that happening in the f near future should administration allow all upperclassmen to venture off campus for lunch or should the privilege be reserved for seniors only for the fnn i'm maddie despain back to you in the studio thank you maddie next week is a special week for high schoolers as it's spring fling week each day there is a dress-up day. Monday is Mom vs. Dad Day, Tuesday is Twitter vs. Vine, Wednesday Brotherhood vs. Sisterhood, Thursday is Blue Socks vs. Pink Socks, and Friday is King vs. Queen. Don't forget about the special events that occur during this week. Friday there's the Battle of the Sex Assembly, and Monday is the Testosterone Volleyball Tournament. It's not too late to sign up for the tournament, just contact your class president. For the FLNN, I'm Shay Turner. Now back to you, Maddie and Marcello. Thank you for joining us today. For the FLNN, I'm Marcello Blanco. And I'm Madison to Spain. God, God bless. bless.